Yeah, it is. It's uh, it's good. It's been a bit frustrating the last two weeks. You sort of turn up to training and do all you can, but you know you can't get picked. So it's it's been frustrating, but at the same time it's been good because you have the guys sort of prepare for their games and run around with the non-15. It's, it's a bit of fun. Is that what you've been doing over the past fortnight then? Just sort of join in sessions and help them where you can? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you've got to just really do your part to get the team ready for the weekend. So I've been doing, doing a bit of that and then running the opposition players against us and then got to have a few good games of touch as well in the sun which was nice with the non-players so that was good. Was good. If I can take you back to the Saracens game I'm sure you may not want to go back there <laughs> but you know, talk me through the incident from your perspective. Ah look it's you know you play the game and as soon as you see a contestable kick go up it's your job to try to get there and I was one of the people that tried to get there and unfortunately me and Alex had a bit of a collision and the ref ruled it the way he did so it's just it's just part of the game I guess. And And what about that moment when he shows you the red card. I mean, what goes through your head at that point? Um, all sorts goes through your head. I probably shouldn't say it on camera, but, you know, it, it guts you. It does gut you. I mean, especially in a big game like that, it's just it's just gutting not to be able to play, especially after three minutes. You don't even get a chance to have any impact on the game. So it's just gutting, I guess, gutting and a bit of anger. And, you know, there were 17,000 people in the ground that day roaring the team on. You were one of them then for for 76 minutes. How difficult was it for you to watch the game then, knowing that it's a game that, you know, with different circumstances you would have been involved in? Yeah, it's, it was a strange feeling because you sort of want to, you're behind the boys as well, you're supporting them, but at the same time you're almost, you're a bit gutted so you're not there at the same time. You just play, sort of played the incident through my head a few times and realised, caught myself on after a while and realised I wasn't following the games and supporting the guys as well as I, as well as I should have been. So tried to change that and just really, as you say, become one of the fans and get behind the team. And the guys I thought were awesome. They, um, the, the, the way they played and got themselves up against 15 people for a whole game was, was unreal and I just gutted they couldn't get the result. And one of the first things you did when Alex Good came back out, you know, into the opposition dugout, the first thing you did was go over and make sure that he was all right. Yeah, look, yeah, that's, it was an accidental thing, and you never want to see to see someone go off the way he did with the oxygen and everything. I thought it was pretty serious, so I was pretty relieved to see him up and walking about and and, and not showing too many ill effects. So yeah, just went over and said sorry, you know, well, well, didn't intend to do that or anything. It's just part of the game, and he was pretty good about it too. He said he asked if I was injured or something. He didn't didn't, didn't think I should have been recarded, so. You know, he was good about it too, which made me feel a little bit better, I guess. And what about the support you've had from the rest of the squad and from the management over recent weeks? Uh, you know, what have people and the rest of the players been saying? Oh, they've been supportive, you know, a few guys haven't said too much, but everyone sort of thinks it was a pretty tough call, as you can imagine. Um, there's been lots of messages on Facebook, apparently, and um, I'm not on Twitter anymore, but apparently the tw a few tweets and whatnot. So it's awesome to know that the public don't hold any ill effects and um, it just sort of makes you feel a little bit a uh, bit better about yourself I guess so and then I got a few mates back home in New Zealand that have been ripping me out a bit so that always that's always good as well you know you got your friends that don't take it too seriously and they can have a joke with you it makes it a bit easy to take the whole thing how difficult is it for you to move on from it you know as a player and you're you know yeah. you know is there is there a danger that it'll be something that will play on your mind or is it something that you're strong enough just to you know put away ah uh, look if it plays on your mind you you probably probably shouldn't be running out in the, in the weekend so um if the same thing happens, I'll, look, I'll probably maybe try to jump a little bit because I think if I try to jump, apparently you don't get in any trouble. So I might just try to jump maybe a centimetre or two the next time. But I'm still, if I still see a kick go up, I'm still going to keep my eyes on the ball and go for the kick. It's what you get trained to do from five years old. So I'm still going to do the same thing probably. And that first, if against, if selected against Lancer and that first high ball goes up, you'll have no doubts about going for it? Yeah, you've got to commit to these things 100%. You shouldn't be playing rugby. You can't play rugby at this level. So nah, there'll be no, no holding back. And, and what about the Leinster game? I mean, there have been big matches before this season. Uh, this is another huge one in terms of you know, Ulster's qualifications yeah. for the, the playoffs. Yeah, it's, um, it's an important game, as you say. It's against the awesome team, the top of the table at the moment, and it's the opening to Ravenhill. So all those three things combined, it makes for a big week, but um, it's exciting. This time of the year is exciting. You sort of play these big games, and then you hopefully put yourself in a position to play semi-finals and finals. So... It's, it's good. The tip boys had a good uh, few days down in Dublin there, and it's a good buzz about the team. We're, we're excited and keen, so it's always it's always good, and I'm looking forward to this weekend. And I imagine booking a playoff spot would be satisfi satisfying for a lot of the players, you know. But a win on Friday night, and you know, potentially booking that that playoff spot would be particularly satisfying for you. Yeah, yeah. Look, um, yeah. Obviously, I owe the team a bit after missing out on on uh, 70 minutes of our our last playoff game. So hopefully, I can do my part to. 
you know, I'm pretty fresh, I guess, I had a few weeks off, a few of the boys have been slogging away, so i just got to bring a bit of energy and enthusiasm and hopefully help them along and play my part and hopefully a victory. Here's hoping. Cheers. Thanks, Neil. Thanks, fella.